Dial House is one of the best kept secrets in Essex. For some 40 years or so, this rambling 16th century farm cottage, nestled deep in the countryside fringing Epping Forest, has been an anarchist pacifist open house and the base of operations for a number of cultural, artistic and political projects ranging from avant-garde jazz events to helping to found the free festival movement. But perhaps the best known manifestation of the public face of Dial House was the band Crass. Crass never used the word permaculture, but their vision of an alternative earthright society where the potential beauty of the human spirit can be fulfilled in harmony with nature's patterns struck a chord with many people who I've since met within world change movements. Diggers, dreamers, new age travellers, road protesters, animal rights campaigners, anti-globalisation activists. There is a generation out there who one way or another drew inspiration from their central message that there is no authority but yourself. Crass all but retired from the public eye during the mid-1980s, facing more personal struggles, particularly against landowners and property developers seemingly intent on encroaching into the last remaining greenbelt areas surrounding London. Over a decade later, this culminated in co-founders Penny Rimbaud and G. Vulture buying the previously rented house at auction, at last securing a stable future for this Centre for Dynamic Cultural Change. The summer of 2001 saw a gathering at Dial House intended as a visioning event to look at the future of this space. Many possibilities were discussed. Art venue, healing workshops, poets retreat, party venue, Willow Sculpture Courses, Alternative Music Festival. In order to open the space up to greater numbers, as well as close the broken fertility cycle, it was decided to build a compost toilet in the garden. None of us had any previous experience in this area, but pretty much all of the information we needed was available from Joseph Jenkins' Human Ear Handbook, as well as the Centre for Alternative Technology publications Lifting the Lid and Sewage Solutions, which between them cover most of the technical, legal and health and safety issues. We decided that the best place to site the project would be annexed to the wall of this wooden self-build artist studio, also that a bucket and chuck it system where the container is emptied to a dedicated composting heap would be the most appropriate in this particular situation. This is a before shot. Our first task consisted of moving much of the ivy at that time covering the outer studio wall. We then built a series of brick and slate piers so that the wooden base of the structure would not come into any contact with the earth below. The base of the structure was then created using two discarded wooden pallets. It took a few adjustments to the heights of the brick piers to achieve a level surface. We then laid a felt skirt over the pallets in order to act as a damp course. Recycled floorboards were then laid over the top of the felt skirt to create the floor of the toilet hut. Our next task was the creation of the framework for the structure using recycled builder's timber. By the end of the first day we had finished the framework including putting in a nice little stained glass window spotted on a rubbish skip in Shoebrunes in Essex. The next morning the sun continued to shine as we fitted the door and began to add the side panels. At this point the roof was not permanently attached, please note. Once again, in the spirit of recycling, the feather edged panels used for the walls previously saw life as the roofing of the kitchen of the main dial house building. Finally, the roof was permanently fixed to the framework. This will later be waterproofed with felt. Note that there is a very small gap between the roof panels and the frame for ventilation and air circulation. Perhaps appropriately, this old fashioned desk salvaged from a local school will shortly be seeing new life as a compost toilet. After conversion, the desk was cut to size and tongue and groove panelling used to create a box. A hole was then cut in one of the desk's lids to fit the toilet bucket. The right hand lid is lifted to facilitate removal of the bucket when full, whilst under the left lid is storage of soak material such as straw, sawdust etc. The whole unit is freestanding so that it can easily be removed for cleaning etc. The completed structure 
ready to go and meeting all of our design criteria. That is, it's simple and easy to use and maintain. It looks good and it doesn't smell at all. Most importantly of all, people actually want to use it. All that remains to be done now is to carry out a few final health and safety checks. The entrance to the human manure composting area. When the bucket is full, it is emptied here to compost for at least a year to destroy any pathogens or other harmful organisms. Although any risks are minimal by this stage, it is still advised that human manure is best applied to ornamental plants or fruit bushes and trees rather than vegetables or salad crops that one is likely to directly handle. Thank mm -hmm. you.